and therefore I'm not going to just type in like $50 here, right? Because there's going to be a bunch of different categories for the adjustments as you can see in the uh, tax software where we can see the adjustments are going to be, here's the income, here's the adjustments uh, for the schedule one part number two. So all of this part number two, I can make a whole nother worksheet based on this, but I'm going to construct it piece by piece as we see those in our practice problem. So then we have our, our this one also a formula. It's not pulling from another worksheet, but it's just a formula. So I'm not going to hard code anything in it. So I'm just going to leave it as is. Itemized deductions also are going to pull from another worksheet that's going to be pulling from the schedule A. I'm not going to create a schedule A yet. We'll build the schedule A as we talk about each of these items within the schedule A. So it's hard coded now, but it won't be once we go later. This one uh, is something that I'm actually, I want to pull from the table down here. So this is something that has to be changed based on whether or not, or what the marital status is, filing status. So I'm going to make this one blue. So I'm going to, we could do that by going to the home tab font group and make it blue. If you don't have that blue, it's in the more colors standard. There's the blue. So that means that this one is going to, is going to have, we're going to have to do data input with it. I'm not going to type it in, which is, and that's what I'm trying to say with the asterisks here. So that's why I tried to put the asterisks to show that these two are tied together, but I'm going to pull this from, I have to do something to it. So usually the blue means hard coding. I'm going to type it in there. I'm not going to type it in there, but I have to manually do something to this cell. That's why I make it blue. This cell, I don't have to do anything manually to this one because it's going to take the greater of these two. In other words, I can test that. If, if these itemized deductions came out to 15,000, it would take 15,000. So I'm not going to hard code the itemized deductions. Those are going to pull in eventually from another worksheet, but you can see how this max thing works. So that means I'm not going to do anything to this cell because it's just going to automatically populate. And then the taxable income again is a formula. So I'm not doing anything to this cell. I'm not going to manually input anything into this cell. The same with this cell because I don't actually type in the tax rate. What I'm going to do is go to the software and say, okay, let the software calculate the tax as we did on page number two, boom, 14266. That means I'm actually going to physically input this into the cell. So I'm going to go home tab font group. This one is a hard coded number. Why? Because I'm not going to try to simulate the table. You could, you could try to say, I want to double check the tax calculation, applying out the progressive tax tables like this, but that's a pretty complex Excel worksheet. I mean, you could do it. It's not that bad, but I mean, you could, but we're, that's probably, we're going to rely and say, okay, that looks pretty good on the software possibly to do that instead of trying to recalculate it and then simply hard code it. So I'm double checking this number in my data input by having other worksheets that flow into this income statement, giving me the detail. And then I let the software calculate this number, which I hard code into the system. Why? That's why it's blue. And then the average tax will automatically populate. That's why it's not blue because I'm not going to do anything to that cell because that will populate with, and, and you can see in the tax summary that it's properly populating here, 16.6, the effective tax rate or average tax rate. So that's the idea with that one. All right. So then, so then we have the other, uh, other credits. So these are going to be other credits that could come into play, child tax credit and so on and so forth that, uh, but we, that's going to come in from another worksheet again. However, I'm going to create those worksheets basically as we go. And then we have the other taxes like self-employment tax, for example, which again, will pull into another worksheet as we go. Therefore, I'm not going to make it blue because I'm not going to hard code the numbers into here, but rather create the worksheet when we get to that part of the practice problem. That gets us to the total tax, which is a formula. Here's what we had before. And, and then we're going to subtract out the credits and add the more taxes. And that's going to be uh, a formula. Therefore, it's not blue. I'm not going to hard code that number. I'm not going to type it in there 
going to leave the formula alone. And then the payments, also something that I'm not typing into here, but rather we created another worksheet over here, which is going to pull into that line item. We will expand on this worksheet later, so it'll be more complex adding more types of payments, such as we currently have W2. We can add estimated payments and credits, refundable credits,